Today we have the honor to interview Dr. Paulo Vasquez Vieira from Mendoza University. Dr. Vieira, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Thank you, Luis. My name is Paula Vasquez Vieira. I'm the head of the international office in the University of Mendoza. And it's a truly pleasure for us to be here in this interview today. Thank you very much, Dr. Paula. Before we start our interview, let me make a short statement about the state of our interview. Number one, our interview will be distributed under a Creative Commons license. Number two, the transcription of our interview will be published in Portuguese by the Periódico Che Química and in English by the Southern Journal of Sciences. Additionally, we, may, we plan to share our interview content with a local television station. The interview is expected to last around 45 minutes. And number four, I am not a professional reporter. So, Dr. Paula, let's start our interview. Our first question, what is the oldest course offered by the University of Mendoza and when it was founded? Well, the oldest degree that we have at the University of Mendoza is a law degree. The UM was founded in 1960 and the first school was the School of Law. So that was the first degree that we had here in this institution. Perfect. Thank you. Currently, which course is the most popular among students at the university and why? Well, if we talk about postgraduate programs, um, the doctorate and the master degrees in law and social science, those are the most in demand. And if we talk about undergraduate programs, medicine, health science, engineering, those are the most in demand. They are becoming very popular among young people. Just a small question. Between medicine and engineering, which has the highest uh, the students look for the most? I think medicine. Medicine is going to be. It's a great but course. Engineering, engineering is increasing. After pandemic, it's increasing a lot. Very good. So, our third question. Which are the research areas with the highest number of scientific publications in the institution and in which fields do they stand out? Um, as you might know, we have six schools. We have a school in architecture, in engineering, in law and social science, in business administration. Um, the, we have research in all of those areas, such as territorial uh, research. We have research in engineering, uh, industrial 4.0, in constructions, in materialization. We have research in viticulture area. And we have also research in Parkinson's disease, um, in water resource. So we have many fields of research going on right now. The medical field is probably top of the line. Well, it's one of them, yes. But the architecture school, they have a lot of research also. Uh, this is a very important school for research. Perfect. Our next question. How many postgraduate courses does the University of Mendoza currently offer and which and in which areas of knowledge? Uh, we have like 16 postgraduate programs, uh, doctorate, masters and specialization. And we have a lot of um, diploma courses in several fields like engineering, business administration, health science. So in those areas, uh, we have uh, the postgraduate programs and diplomas courses. Thank you very much, Dr. Paula. Our next question. When international students wish to stay at the University of Mendoza, 
What is the process from sending the student's proposal to their arrival at the university? Well, if international students uh, want to come for a semester, they need to submit a few documents and they have to upload them in an online application. Once they submit those documents as transcript records and passport and intense letter, our schools, they are going to review them. And if everything is okay, we will send them an acceptance letter. So it's not a complicated uh, process. They just need to send a few documents and we have to review them. And if everything is okay, they will be able to come. Perfect. It's very fast and dynamic. Yes, it is. Dr. Paula, let's go to our next question. Does the University of Mendoza offer any type of accommodations or a resi uh, university residence for the students that came from abroad? If so, what are the options available and how are the facilities and infrastructure to accommodate these students, including foreigners? Mm -hmm. The University of Mendoza doesn't have a student's residence, but we do have a lot of information about a different kind of uh, accommodation, like apartments, um, private rooms, homestay. So we send all this information to the students so they can choose the best option for them. And we guarantee that those options are secure and they have all the services and amenities they might need during their stay here at Mendoza. Perfect, this is very good. Let's go to our next question. Currently, the University of Mendoza is participating in the second edition of the Southern Science Conference event, which follows a different model of organization involving multiple universities. What benefits does the university expect to bring to its students by engaging in this international projection through this event. As host of this international conference, the University of Mendoza goals is to offer students a great and valuable opportunity to learn more about uh, global subjects and to achieve a global perspective about those subjects. So we are sure that this international event is going to be a great opportunity for them to develop networking, to know more about these subjects, as I said, and to know to connect with other peers and professionals. And for the academic uh, experiences, though, this event is going to be really, really important for them. Thank you very much, Dr. Paula. Our next question. Considering the challenges imposed by the time zone differences, what suggestions would you give for the organizing committee of the event aiming to maximize the participation of students from your university. Making a mm -hmm. short note, suppose that the next edition, the host country is another one. Mm -hmm. um, I think everything is perfectly organized, but if I have to suggest something, um, maybe considering the different time zone, we can offer uh, sessions at different times. So, because it's going to be a hybrid uh, event, so students from all over, all over the world will be able to participate, to discuss with colleagues and to learn about these uh, subjects. So, I think if we use uh, a session at different time of the day, that is going to be uh, very helpful for them. Perfect. Thank you very much. Next question. By participating in an international event at no cost to the students, the university demonstrates its commitment in offering valuable opportunities. How do you assess the importance of student participation in international events for their academic and professional development? Student participation in this event is crucial. The, not for their academic and professional development. And because they are, as I said, they are going to be able to, um, to connect with peers and professionals, to make uh, networking, to learn more about these important subjects, and also to increase their intercultural competence. 
which are very, very important in this interconnected world. Perfect. Thank you. Dr. Paula, we are achieving our last question. The conference will also organize specific sections for the exchange of experience between librarians, publishers, and editors of the universities. Do you believe that this experiment could create new institutional channels of communication, including joint international publications? Yes, for sure. Uh, having these sessions with librarian, um, with international uh, departments, I'm going to be part of one of them. This is a great opportunity for us. It's, it's a great opportunity to develop, a, as you said, institutional communication channel. And with those channels, maybe we can create a new joint academic uh, programs to make research together. So yes, for sure, this is a great opportunity for all these uh, departments. Dr. Paula, on behalf of the Southern Science Conference Committee and the journals Periodico Che Chimica and the Southern Journal of Sciences, I would like to thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Your insights are incredibly valuable and I am excited to share them with, the, with our audience. I truly appreciate your time and contribution. Thank you very much, Dr. Paula. Thank you, Luis. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about University of Mendoza and also for allowing us to be part of, the, of this international event. So thank you so much to you and to the whole team. Thank you very much, Dr. Paula. See you soon. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.